welcome back to a new video. Now I've got a double garage here, double length, and I've been looking for a way to heat it that is not expensive, but most importantly, not loud. I was looking at those big torpedo tube heaters, the ones that go but no good for me in the garage. So, for max speed and rods, I've got one of these diesel heaters. Now these are designed to go in the likes of cars, boats, caravans, bus conversions, stuff like that. There's even people putting them in houses now. The cheaper heaters tend to be a Chinese replica of the higher end with Basto heaters that retail for about four or five times the price. Diesel fuel fired heater technology was first developed in Europe in the 1940s. Since its inception the technology has become widely accepted and the market for these products has grown significantly throughout Europe. In the 1980s the technology and its associated products were then imported into the North American market. In the last couple of years the Chinese market for diesel heaters has really exploded. One of the Chinese market leaders is Max Payton Rods that have this 5 kilowatt kit available for under £200. And for a comparison, 5 kilowatt is the same output as the average UK home log burner. As you can see, the kit comes with almost everything you need to install the heaters in almost any space. This particular kit has an easy to use manual control panel and also it can be Bluetooth controlled off a smartphone. If you get one of these at some point, you are going to have to take it a bit, whether it's to clean it out because again, some of them get sorted up, people try and run them on uh, like used engine oil and they do get quite sorted up inside. Also, the glow plugs are known to fail in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bits and see how simple it is to service. Now, to take the bits you need like a basic tool kit, you need some Allen keys, a screwdriver and it's either a 12 or a 14 milli spanner. Start off by removing the vent from the rear of the heater. And once the vent's off, this will just slide off the cover like that. Then there is your heater. Then you just lift this little bit up here and your heater or take this rubber gasket off the bottom and your heater will just pop out like that. First thing to do, we'll take this screw off here. Then you push these two clips in to remove this. Like that. Then with a flathead screwdriver, you pop this little connector off. Like that. Then we'll get a 4mm Allen key. Take these screws out. Then with a 12mm spanner, we'll undo this glow plug. Then once your glow plug is loose, I found the easiest thing to do is to kind of hang the unit and spin the glow plug and let all the bottom bit, like all the, all the giblets spin below. There we go. So that is the glow plug if you ever need to change it literally takes three minutes to get out. Now let's see what's in here. Three milli Allen key. You will notice none of the screws have got thread lock on. It's just all hand tight. Nothing's stuck in, nothing's seized. You don't need any leverage to get the screws out. They'll all come out pretty easy. So you can see, before I take the top of that, this bit out, this is your fuel in. You can see the pipe there runs down round, then it goes in, just here where, you, where, your, glow plug, where your glow plug is. See there, fuel in. There's the pipe that goes round into here. Then there, that's where your glow plug goes in. You can see that's where your fuel goes in. Now this should just lift off. Like that. That's the tube. 
So that's what's inside, like a welded tube with like a, there's your fuel line. You see inside there, you see. Nothing much in it to be honest, pretty simple, pretty simple design. This is brand new, has never been run. We can see all, all the fins are quite thin and the reason for that is it heats up quick and it'll cool down quick. You don't want to be waiting ages for this to heat up and you don't want to wait ages for it to cool down when you turn it off. So that's why the, the fins are thin. But that's it, that's, uh, that's the inside of it. But I get a torch so you can see. You see in there? Not much to it, is there? There is a fella on YouTube cut one of these up and show you it running inside. So I'll put a clip in of what it looks like when it's running. You basically cut this end off here, chop that off, and you can see it running. But that is the inside and how to clean one of your diesel heaters to get the glow plug out and that. Um, obviously if you're doing the glow plug, you don't need to take this bit out of there. But if, you, if you've gone this far to strip it, you might as well take this out and just check it's not all, all coked up. But we'll build it back up and we'll get fitting it to my garage. Now this is the only gasket I came across on the full strip down of this heater. Like I say, to put the glow plug back in, just let all these giblets hang and spin it, and you nip it up once it's kind of in place, if that makes sense. There we go, it stopped spinning. So then you get your spanner and nip it up. Then these four screws go back in here, and like I say, no Loctite on the end of the screws. Then we'll just pop this little grommet back on the glow plug. Then we'll reattach this connector back to this orange box. Like that. Then this screw goes back on here. Yet again, no Loctite or anything, just straight on. And that is now ready to go back in the casing and you can see how it works. So this is a motor on the back with like a fan. And what that does is it blows air over all the fins, then the heat, like that, and the heat comes out the front here, through your pipe, and into wherever you're putting it. Now before it goes back in the casing, you do need to put these little rubber things on the ends of the fins. I'm guessing this is to keep it in place and stop it rattling about. And that goes into there. Watch that electrical connector, like that. That slides in here, like that. Done. Pop the vent on the back of there, and we're done. Right, now, when I install this, this heater, right, I want all the noisy bits outside the garage. So this and the, the fuel pump, the fuel pumps on them are quite noisy, they make like a ticking noise. So this and the fuel pump is going outside the garage. I want everything else inside the garage. So I'm going to have the fuel tank inside so I don't have to go outside to fill it up. I'm going to have the controller inside the garage because why would you not? Obviously you want that inside. And I'm also going to have the power supply inside the garage. So because this is going outside along with the fuel pump, I need something I can keep it in that's waterproof. So I went on the RS website I think it's called RS Direct, and I've got a metal box. This is weatherproof, it's got like a weatherproof strip on the inside there. This is 400 millimeters, where I'll stand up. And this is 400 millimeters by 300 millimeters by, by 210 millimeters deep. Now, this heater does go in, it is a tight squeeze, but it does go in. So I'm going to figure that out how I'm going to fit this then I'll catch up with you in a bit. So this is where we're up to right I've got the I've got the heater in the box right it's in the box I'll open the lid here now for you. So like I say the heater is in the box I'll stand it up so you can see 
Now I won't, I'll turn it round. Right, so this is where... Ah, fuck's sake. Right, so this is where we're at, right? We've got the heater in the box there. I've welded this bracket on to keep it in place so the heat is in place. I've then got the exhaust and the, the air inlet here. You see there? Exhaust, there's the fuel coming in. This comes in at the bottom of the, the box here. This is a fuel line now. It's recommended when you go on some of the Facebook pages for these heaters that you change this fuel line. So I will be cha changing this fuel line. I'll also be changing this inlet pipe because this is like a like a PAP one, it needs like really, this is going to be outside, so it needs like a, a weatherproof one. And to be honest, I haven't really touched this for like a week. I got a bit sick of it, purely because it's a, it's a lot of work putting it in the box. Like I had to buy the box, the box was 70 quid, now I've got to buy a pipe. These heaters are not as simple as people make out when you go on the pages. There is a lot of work to do and a lot of, a lot of just reading and then uh, figuring out angles for pump, for the fuel pump and just, there's loads of things people will pick up, pick up on. So, I am a bit sick of it, but I'm, I'm going to start back on now. I've got the wiring, the wiring harness for the heater comes out the top of the box here. I've then got, I've then got this, which goes on the back here. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut this pipe off here, and we'll use this and stick it, stick it on there. Then this is going to stick onto there, and that's the air. This is the inlet for the air that's going to come into the garage. So there's a the box done. I'm going to take it outside, fit it on the wall, and I'll catch up with you when I've done that. Let's go. Right, so we've got it on the wall. I did try this fuel line, like the stuff that came with it, and it's absolute garbage. So we're going to cut this off, and I've got some new stuff to go on. Cut that off there. Next, we'll put the inlet in there. Next job is to drill a hole and mount the fuel pump at an angle between 30 and 45 degrees. This pump needs to be set at an angle about 45 degrees, which is exactly between 90, so you want it in the middle about 45 degrees. This is a new replacement fuel line. It's got a five millimeter bore, and I'll leave a link to the exact fuel line I used in the description of this video. So as you can see, we've got the box mounted. We've got the heater in, we've got the fuel line going in there, that black one. I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video if you want your own. We've got the combustion inlet, the combustion outlet. We've got the outlet for the, the heat that's in the garage and the inlet for the heat that's going to go into the garage. We've also got the exhaust mounted here. We've got the fuel line coming through the wall into the box. Uh, I'm going to put the filter on the end of here just mainly to stop bugs and that from getting in. Right, let's head in the garage and wire this in.
heat. So when I use my diesel heater, I don't want to use one of the Chinese boxes what people use. They run on like a three pin plug, uh, 230 volts. I'm going to run mine off a car battery, 12 volts, less power, less chance of fire in my head anyway. So uh, this is how I'm going to wire it up to my car battery. I've got two cars, so I could be using any car to run the diesel heater at any time. So I've got some cheap crocodile clips off eBay. I'll leave links to everything I use below. Some two core cable. This is rated to the current, the proper amperage for the diesel heater. I think the most the pull is about eight amps. This is rated for like 14 amps, so plenty. So let's start by stripping the ends of the wires and figuring out how we're going to fit these crocodile clips. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but as you watch this video, you'll see me figure it out. This is my beauty and powered soldering iron. It's an absolutely amazing bit of kit. So this is the end of the diesel heater where it will connect to a battery like if you were hardwiring it in or you were running it off one of the 240 volt boxes. But as we've made something, we're going to chop the ends of this off. Then we'll strip the ends and connect them together on the other end of the wire that I've put the crocodile clips onto. So the heater should be all ready to go apart from we haven't put any fuel in the tank yet. I just want to put some power to it, make sure when nothing goes wrong because this is like a Chinese heater and China isn't Japan and the quality isn't the highest. So just for safety's sake we're going to put some power to it and just check it doesn't go pop or whatever. So we'll, put, we'll check we've got power then we'll put fuel in. So you can see I've got, already got a charger wired up to the mains to keep the battery topped up. So literally this should never ever go flat. Let's just go for it, let's put some diesel in, see if it works. I'm only putting a little bit in, because if it leaks, then I've just got more of a leak to sort out. So we'll just put a little bit in, check it's not leaking. If it's not leaking, we'll turn it on, see if it works. I think it's working. We're pumping, I need a pump. Turn that angle a bit. Oh, it's getting off the speeding up. I've got absolutely no idea what's going on here. It's not working at the minute. The fuel pump's clicking. But that's just blown cold. Get the instructions out. 
So I am being a bit impatient when I've read the instructions in the book, right? It says after about three seconds of turning it on, the glow plug will heat up. Then after about 1.5 minutes, the fuel pump, which you can hear clicking, that'll start. Then after about five minutes, the heater will kick in. So since I've installed it, it's been a couple of days and I've had a bit of a play about with it. So what we're gonna do now is, with my girlfriend's best Pyrex dish, we're gonna see how economical it is. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put half a litre of diesel into my girlfriend's new Pyrex dish thing. This is just white diesel, straight from the petrol station. That is half a litre, exactly. So let's get a bit of masking tape. Put that on there and we'll mark the current, the current fuel line. Then we'll add half a litre and we'll time it for an hour and see how much it uses. Right, so we'll put half a litre in, so we'll mark the tank where it's up to. That's where we started, we've put half a litre in and that's where we're up to. So we'll time it for an hour and see where the level goes. We've got the heater set to maximum power, so it's blowing full force there. It is hot, you can keep your hand there for maybe... Ooh, and we'll time it, are you ready? Get my hand back normal, are you ready? We'll time how long and keep your hand there. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, four seconds, four seconds. So we'll give that, let us see, we'll give that an hour, and we'll see how much fuel we use in an hour. The current price of fuel is about £1.80. I've put half a litre in, so I've put about a pound, less than a pound, about 90 pence worth of diesel in. So we'll see how it goes. So the heater has been running for about an hour and 10 minutes and it's used about a quarter of a litre of diesel. I'll zoom in so you can see there. You see that's, ho that's half a litre there. It's used about a quarter and it's definitely, definitely took the chill off in the garage. It's maybe about four or five degrees warmer than it was before I put the heater on. But bear in mind, it has been running for about an hour. Now regarding insulation in the garage, my garage is insulated the roof. Just the roof, the walls are all uninsulated. There's 50 milli insulation all over the roof. The heater also comes with this handy little remote to turn it on and off. So you can see, you've got literally four buttons on the remote. You've got up, down, on, on, off. Let's press the up and down, I'm not sure what it'll do. That's turning the temperature. Up and down, can you, can you hear the pump slowing down, pumping less diesel in? So that's just literally the power. So we can turn that back up. You can then turn it off with the remote just by pressing, pressing it off. We can also turn it back on. Now, my advice for anyone who's thinking of getting one and you're not sure if it'll heat the space what you're going to use it in, is put a hairdryer on. Literally leave the hairdryer. It's about the same kind of heat output as a hairdryer. So put a hairdryer on for about an hour in wherever you're going to heat and see if it makes a difference. And that's about the same as what one of those diesel heaters will do. But listen, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Oh, I'll also leave all links in the description of the video.